All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get through this. So what we're talking about here is location intelligence, which is a fancy way of saying we're connecting data with geography. Um, what that means is so, you know, we have our, at Transwestern and within our industry, we have a huge, huge amount of data. So you guys, I'm sure, have seen things like CoStar and LoopNet and Real Capital Analytics, um, or the XRM, uh, Revista, you know, uh, 20 other things that we actually pull data from, which is great. We have all the, we have data. We can get good numbers. Um, but the thing is, how we actually present it and how we relate it to other things. So how is how do we look at how, you know, let's say what vacancy is in all the buildings surrounding us? What can we look at, like employment statistics that tell us about where vacancy rates are heading us, are, are heading? Uh, what about, you know, a certain demographic drive is going to help drive our client's building? So things like that, we can look at, you know, we can apply these to a lot of things, looking at site selection, um, which is, you know, helping our clients find, you know, find or optimize existing locations. Uh, market optimization, where we're looking at how we help them expand or consolidate or you know maximize their real estate footprint. Uh, we can help figure out what a, what their target customer or client is. So if we're working with uh, a retailer, working with a healthcare provider, working with an office client, we can help you know figure out where exactly their target profile is um, and figure out you know what their potential is in that market. Well, why do we do this? So I, I like to say that real estate is the business of geography. Everything we're doing has a is correlated with a location in space or time. So what we're talking about is that every data point we're dealing with here has a location you know, somewhere on the face of the earth, which means we can use mapping and geography to do analysis to inform us about what's going on. So again, how could we look at, how could we help our client be in a better location? Um, is there such thing as a better location? How can we help them reach their employees or their customers? Uh, you know, how can we graphically show, you know, the different market variables on a really minute level, so you can block to block or you know, or building to building? Uh, and how can we visually show market trends? So again, it's great to do marketing reports. It's great to do. It's great to have all the statistics that we have. But how can we show them in the, the, that in a really interesting, dynamic way? So. With location intelligence, it is something that we can use amongst all property types and most facets of our building, of our of our industry. So, <coughs> excuse me. If, uh, traditionally, it's been used by mostly by our tenant advisory services team. We're really rolling it out to be a solution that hits everybody, be that low agency leasing, be that capital markets. Um, and a big push right now is to how we actually spread that beyond our services, and work with say property management, work with facilities management and even with the uh, Transwestern development. So internally, we have you know, about six people like myself that do what I would call GIS, which is Geographic Information Systems. Um, you won't be quizzed on that later, don't worry. Uh, who do that full time. Additionally, um, we have, some an we have um, a tier of GIS access um, online that we roll out to our and users across the country that aren't necessarily GIS analysts. So people like research, marketing, and graphic design, um, admin, <coughs> a couple of people on our development team. Uh, we have a couple of executive accounts who can use that to look at our own internal metrics. Uh, we have more and more brokers using that. We have accounts that are dedicated to specific clients. And subtle hint, you guys, we will be rolling. It, we may be looking at rolling it out to some people on this call that are interested. So the goal being is that we have a huge, ton of, a huge amount of analysis and, and information we can use that we use with our you know, full-time analysts. But the goal being is that we're actually rolling out more and more tools to the end user, who, a dedicated um, GIS person. So, and we will look at, and actually that's next week's that's call. Better. We're going to um, actually dig okay. in. We're going to walk through a couple of case studies. Um, using the tools, and we'll walk you guys through, you know, how you would do this um, for your team. And.
and so just a couple of you know little things we're looking at for tenant advisory services. Oh, you know, I've done that so many times. Really about yeah. how the tenant works with yeah, um, their works with their location and interacts with their employees. Uh, so we can help them find more suitable locations. We can help them try and reduce travel times for their employees. We can help them look at how they could consolidate locations. Um, you know, for an industrial, we could look at supply chain and distribution patterns. It's all about figuring out what sort of questions we want to answer and helping us answer that for our clients. Uh, for agency leasing, again, we can, you know, sort of flipping the switch where we're actually looking at it from the building perspective. How can we showcase, um, you know, how our building sits in relationship to a potential employment pool? How does it sit, you know, how can the actual building's location help the tenants within it, you know, optimize, um, attract and retain employees in given industries or how can, or maybe how can you retenant a building to meet the need, to meet what the employment profile is around that building. Um, also looking at things like transportation, the demographics around it. And for capital markets, we can actually look at it in you know, similar ways, but it, you know, from a different, sort of a different viewpoint of how we can, you know, showcase the value of said building um, and said location. So, trying to do some new cool stuff here. Additionally, you know, looking at, uh, you know, doing some three D analytics. We're rolling out more and more stuff that's enabled into Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, really using this as, much, you know, making sure that we are using this as a site suitability tool and incorporating some financial tools as well. Um, this is another fun one where we're actually, you know, traditionally this has been something where we look at it from. You know, a metro level, a city level, a block level. Now we're actually going to some. There are some new tools that are actually working on a building by building level, so we can actually say take a site plan for a building, and actually look at different, you know, apply the geography to the actual building, so we can look even maybe suite by suite by suite, um, and doing some tools. Um, there's a tool called RGS Insights, uh, which is sort of like Tableau, but it integrates um, a full host of kind of geographic analysis, um, and, and does that some sort of instant visualization and analysis. And the big thing for next year is we're actually integrating in um, RxRM and Curve, uh, some of our internal transwestern apps with some you know, location analytics capabilities to kind of really further that depth uh, and do some really new, you know, fun, exciting things. So that's a little bit. So that's kind of a very, very brief run through about what about what the program is, what it does. Um, I just want to see if any questions so far. Okay. Well, let me show you guys some samples and we'll keep it, we'll keep on now. So this is a little bit of what we talked about. Again, why is it such a great tool? Because everything has a location. So for Office, there's a few things we can do. Um, and again, this is, this is a, a, a tool and a method of analysis where we can actually use it to, uh, for all sectors. But for office, so like in this slope, potential location, this is looking at if the client is here and the potential location they're looking at is here to be closer to um, maybe competitors. Well, that's great. You could be you know closer to your compet you're competing to like firms. But where does your actual employee base sit? Is it you know is it closer to your existing location? Um, we could also look at this. You know how do we max maximize location to existing uh, employees or to their potential employees. So if they need to kind of reshuffle the deck there, um, we can help them attract and retain their sort of target employee. And again, again, more about looking, employees are a big one here where we can help, you know, help minimize transportation costs and help minimize transportation time. Um, you know, every other, every few minutes that it, further that you get away from your employees, you're actually losing people and losing, and losing efficiency. And how can we actually show, you know, well, how does transportation relate to all this? So this is looking at uh, downtown San Francisco. You know, we can actually look at this and correlate rent versus distance to transportation. As we pivot over to industrial for a little bit, we actually, industrial is an interesting one where there's a lot of interesting questions that we're just starting to ask. Um, so how can we, you know, look at you know, what the demographics are, what changes happening in an area, and also correlate that with um, different buildings. So in this case, looking at, you know, where are the urban cores uh, and where are, where's necessarily the building stock that might be, say, functionally obsolete, that could be repurposed into maybe a different higher and better use um, or adaptive reuse into a different sort of warehousing. Or 
what is the axis to port to the transportation cost? So we could look at uh, different sized off industrial spaces and their relationship to the transportation network. Uh, also with industrial, we can look at drage. Uh, so if for industrial, drage is roughly the cost of getting a container from, say, the port to the to, to the um, distribution points. In this case, it's say to get to from the port of Newark to exit seven on the New Jersey Turnpike is roughly six hundred dollars a TEU, which is sort of you know if you can imagine that giant shipping container, that's one TEU. Right, even showing yeah, again employees looking at where their target employment profile is. So in this case, if we had our existing employment center here. You know, what is, you know, how far are you from the port? How many employees do you have there within that point? And if you're looking at a target sort of employee, you know, could, is there a point where you might be able to, to access them better? For anybody doing retail, we also have a whole host of fun things. Um, location analytics is sort of a tool that cut its teeth on retail, um, trying to figure out, you know, customer density and customer prospecting. So in this case, we wanted to show you know, give an area of where the retail is and the competition is. Um, also, you know, try and prevent store cannibalization. We can also incorporate um, store level demographics. So if we were trying to find out locations where we wouldn't cannibalize existing sales and has a target demographic, we can figure that out as well. And same thing, figuring out store footprints and, you know, what chain is where uh, going from there. I'm going to do one quick pivot over into medical. This has been a sector where we're doing more and more um, data-driven location analytics. Um, medical is one that I, I is operates in some ways a lot like retail, as our medical, as our healthcare tenants um, and clients are trying to be able to position themselves uh, closer and closer to patients to better serve their needs. We can help them look at sort of those sorts of variables, um, be that physician access, be that patient access, be that. Um, medical procedure counts to help them be as close to their client to their patient base as they can be. Um, we can look at you know both the yeah, existing facilities where their target patients are, what the medical mar retail mar real estate market looks like. You know, be that medical office, be that office with medical, retail with medical, um, and a few different variables there. We can find areas where that have the best act, that are most likely to be successful and have the most access to, our, to their target patient. And look at things like payer base. So in this case, when you want it to be a healthcare provider and you want it to be as close as possible to the areas with high densities of um, private insurance coverage. And then we can also look at it from the standpoint of sort of research if we want to find out some sort of specialty questions, uh, you know, looking at using our data to show this visual study. So in this case, looking at, this is industrial rents across greater Chicago. Uh, we can show you know, where those pockets of higher rent are, um, you know, in this case, near the downtown and near narrow hair, um, in addition to you know, uh, the amount of space available. Or uh, in this case, this is, again, uh, this is looking at a new transit line extension and showing what the property composition is near that extension. So within that, I've thrown a bunch of stuff out, out at y'all and I know, you know, trying to be cognizant of time and I know this is a lot to throw out at everybody. So questions so far. All right. I mean, so this, a lot of this is, we're trying to create tools where, um, if you guys have access to them, you know, again, we'll probably go through this. We will absolutely work through some case studies, a couple of case studies next week, uh, showing you how, you know, from your end, you would be able to do this. Uh, the goal being that we actually have tools that are, from your standpoint, that are no harder to use, say, than just using CoStar. So, you know, trying to make it easy breezy such that you you can help yourself or help your senior broker uh, find answers and run analysis in a relatively quick and easy process, uh, rather, yeah. So. You can do something in 10 minutes versus say, you know, asking an analyst and getting a response in a couple of days. Uh, that might probably more efficient use of your time. And, you know, you guys um, are savvy, capable people who can find it out, who can do 
do a lot of things on your own and be a lot more self-sufficient than let's say some of our existing uh, team. So, so I'll do uh, one more quick call for questions and uh, we'll go from there. So again, any, any final thoughts, questions, uh, anything you guys are unsure about? Hey, Brian, this is Emily. Um, thanks so much for the presentation. I've, I don't know about the other people on the call. Truthfully, I don't know what questions we should be asking. Well, that, that's, that's because actually, this is kind of, yeah. you know, beyond us, but <laughs> it's super interesting. I, I guess I'm really interested in knowing how this is changing um, the way that brokers interact with their clients. Like, um, I don't know if there's a way that you can quantify that or, or you know, compare to maybe yeah. – you know, five, ten years ago when we didn't have this technology, but what, what's kind of the difference that you're seeing in between um, now when we're able to give, like, heat maps to our clients versus, you know, maybe, I don't know how much longer, how long yeah. technology has been around, let's say five years. Yeah, no, that's actually a really good question. So, and, and you know, I can, I can kind of answer this anecdotally based on what I've seen. Um, you know, five years ago, this was something where what we did, what, you know, we said, hey, you know, let's put together a whole host of, of things and let's do a bunch of PDFs and have a whole print book. So like, let's say if you were going out to tour a client, you're gonna do a whole big giant stupid tour book that, forgive me, forgive me for calling it stupid, a whole big giant tour book that is, you know, 100 pages long, it has a bunch of information, we throw everything at them and, you know, it has it has all their sites and has all, it has, you know, you're slicing and dicing the information six ways from Sunday and that's great and they, put the book in their briefcase, and it goes in the recycling when they get back to the office. Now we're actually doing more and more what I would call kind of these interactive maps, where we're incorporating different layers into them um, and having a little more of a targeted process that's a lot more iterative, where our, analysis, our, our analyst team is working much more hand-in-hand -hand with our brokerage team, and we're at the same time, too, trying to work more hand-in-hand -hand with our client base. So we're actually creating something that's a little more customized, that's a little more tailored to what their actual needs are versus us thinking we know what they need. I, a lot of times we're pretty on we're pretty on that, but I think we're doing a lot more of um, a targeted approach to match their needs as closely as possible. Yeah, and I, I would imagine that it's a lot easier to look at this one page document that, you know, maybe has like all of their locations in red, all their competitors in blue, and mm -hmm. they're able to digest that quite a bit more yep. easily than, you know, maybe a 10 page packet. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the quick answer there after my long spiel is that the answer is that we're going for quanti for quality versus quantity right now. We're going for how how can we show our client the answer that we want to show them as quickly and as concisely as possible versus having them, you know, I think for a few years back before, you know, a lot of other firms maybe had certain tech had a, had the same level of technology. It was it was enough to throw a lot of content at them to make it look like we know what to make it look to you know. To create the image, to create the image that we are, you know, really on top of things. As a lot of our competition has kept caught up, and as honestly as some of our clients have adopted some of the same technology, we need to show them that we are, you know, answering the questions as as easily as possible. Without, you know, they have they have enough going. They're getting enough noise from uh, their own internal data tools from other brokers. We want to give them easy, quick, easy, and and actionable items uh, to understand. Cool. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brian, um, Bo Stewart, I know we've worked on some stuff the past few weeks. Um, something moving forward, maybe what can we do as projects come up that we see an opportunity to do GIS work? What can we do to make your job easiest and make the process move as quickly as possible? Well, oh, that's a wonderful question. I love hearing that. Um, so if you're working with me, and also some of you may also work with uh, a couple of my a couple of my colleagues, be that Paris Williams or Paul Bredding or um, Brian Tharp or Gregorio Barrera, again, whatever you can do, a lot of what I would tell you to do is when you're doing data prep, if you can present that in, say, like, you know, let's say we're looking at a list of competitive locations or um, buildings you're touring or different sites with data, if you can get that in things like, you know, Excel with excuse me, um, you know, with well, you know, parsed out, you know, data that's well set up, be that having, you know, having the address city state at the ready. Um, and I can actually send out, I, after this, I will send out a copy of the presentation and just a sample sheet. Again, uh, you guys, and Bo, you've been doing great so far, but, you know, just so you know, just this, this is how you can make life really, really easy such that if I can just input your data uh, without having to totally reformat things, that, that makes life 
that makes life much, much easier. So, yeah. But good question, though. Again, by the way, Thank no you. pressure for questions. I'm just, you know, just had to ask. <laughs> so, and next week, I'm hoping, and next week we'll actually get into it a little bit of an actionable item. So it's a little bit less of me talking uh, to you and throwing, you know, 20 things at you all at once. All right. Well, business analyst team, thank you all for, for your time today. I know you guys are busy. Um, sometime this afternoon, be on the lookout. I'll send you guys a copy of uh, the link to the presentation map, of, of the audio recording of this, and um, the PowerPoint slides. And additionally, and now, a formatted you know sample input template. But yeah, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I can help happily answer your questions or connect you with the right person. But um, We'll go from there. And yes, uh, so same time next week on Wednesday the 14th, we're going to do uh, a little bit of a deeper dive. Or again, we'll do a live demo and show you, you know, how you could use the technology on your side um, and just show you, or even if you're not using it, this is how, so maybe some way, some way to how to think about this um, in terms of how you can, you know, add value here. So thank you everybody for your time today and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Brian. Brian.